Hello, Dr. Frank Tate. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you too. My name is Noel Lolo. Noel. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we're going to talk about. We're going to use your experience as a um, retired faculty in UC um, to have some information about you to help with histor historians. So I have a few questions we're going to ask you. I will try. All right. Thank you. Um, so first of all, when did you come to the, um, the university and what brought you here? Well, I started as an undergraduate student here in okay. 1956, and uh, I got my bachelor's and my master's here, and then I went to, well, I was on the faculty before I left, I went to the University of Michigan, okay. and I stayed there for two years, and then I came back here, and so uh, probably uh, I've been here on these staff, I was a research assistant mm -hmm. after I got my undergraduate degree. So I guess if you consider that would be 1961, and I retired in 94, 94 so okay. 33 years. Uh, I was on the staff or faculty, joined the faculty, I think, in 64, if I remember right. Yeah. Okay. So what basically you brought you here? Like, yeah, <laughs> is, it, um, is it? Well, uh, back then in high school, we mm -hmm. used to take a test, and it would tell you what, what you should go to an okay. aptitude test. Okay. And mine said I should either be a pilot or air, or an engineer. Okay. So I put the two together and became an aeronautical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, when no, I want to know some things you're passionate about. Um, is there something you passionate about you want to share with us? Passionate about. Yeah, passionate about. Were you passionate about um, piloting and like? You just said I'm aeronautical engineer, and were you like passionate about it or? Well, uh, the co-op program at okay. the university is one of the things that attracted me here mm -hmm. because uh, neither of my parents went to college and uh, we were not uh, wealthy by a long shot, so I knew I had to pay my own way to college. And uh, the co-op program, I felt, gave me a way to do that. It worked very well. Of course, the tuition was a lot less. When I went to undergraduate school here, we went uh, in engineering, we went three eight-week terms. It was three hundred and thirty dollars a term, so less than a thousand dollars a year. A lot less than than it is now. Of course, pay wasn't as good as it is now either. Oh, okay. but it's what all evened out. Okay. So, um, what did what um, what did you want to teach? And well, like, what did you engineering? Want to teach? I was interested yeah, in engineering, yeah, yeah. and I was kind of interested uh, in going into administration too, which I okay. did after okay. a number of years. Uh, okay. I was in the aero department, and after I got my undergraduate degree, a new department head came in named Paul Harrington, and he asked me if I would stay on. They had a research contract at uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and uh, he asked me if I'd stay on, and I did, and uh, never left. <laughs> I had two job offers, one in California, one in Texas. I put them on hold for two years, but I never got out of school. <laughs> never left. Okay, so you teaching um, engineering can you describe how like the classes were to you and like what did you hope your students like would learn well, from I, you and take away? And also did you have like any favorite students you want to show their students? <laughs> <laughs> no, too numerous to mention. Uh, but I enjoyed teaching. I enjoyed uh, it kept me young and uh, I enjoyed teaching. I taught fluid mechanics. And I taught stability and control. A number of other courses. When you're you're come into the department, you always get the the courses nobody else wants for a few years. You know, until you get you get some seniority. So I taught most of the courses, but it, uh, I just enjoyed teaching. Uh, once I went into administration in about 1993, I guess I continued to teach, but I was traveling so much that it was difficult. Uh, and I felt guilty having my graduate assistant teach, so I stopped teaching, uh, okay. well, I guess in about 1983 uh, or 84. Okay. But I, so I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the students. I enjoyed the feedback from the students. Uh, enjoyed it especially uh, when I was started, there were very few women in engineering. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed the women in engineering a lot because I, what I found is a lot of the, the young men that come into engineering, they go into engineering because their father was an engineer or their grandfather was an engineer, and they really are just pushed into it. Whereas the girls coming in, 
they wanted to be an engineer. And they were always much more enthusiastic. We didn't have many, but the ones that I had, they were very good, very good students. And hopefully still continued. Now the number of ladies in engineer. I have a daughter who's an engineer, so we encouraged her. Uh, so that I enjoyed teaching the, the ladies yeah. very much because of their enthusiasm for engineering. Yeah, I remember looking in um, uh, one of the 1969 yearbooks, and I there were like so many guys. It was just one girl that whole that was in house. <laughs> You're right. The like, girls back then were either in chemical engineering or civil engineering. I don't know why, but that uh, we didn't have any in Arrow when I graduated. Well, we only had our graduating class was only 17, I think. So we didn't have a whole lot of people back then. Now. Arrow, I think, and there's about a hundred a year, so it's uh, okay. com completely different now, much larger okay. and good. So, um, so would you want to take us through your hiring process, like how you go hired, like the story, if there's any interesting story about your like hiring process? But hiring or hiring, like getting into the university, like oh. is there like? <laughs> uh, well, I guess. Uh, <laughs> The department had Paul Harrington helped me a lot. Okay. He knew I was interested in administration. And uh, he had a friend, George Lee was his name, who was director of research. And he had a, a me medical problem. He was out of the, his office for several months. And Dr. Harrington talked to the president, uh, who was Walter Langston at that time, and they appointed me as a acting director of research. And I sort of, for three months, and I sort of, really got interested then. So when I came back from Michigan in uh, 1970, I guess it was, in 73, when Warren Bennis, 72 or 73, when Warren Bennis was the president, he appointed Guy Stern as the first uh, title was the University Dean for Research and Advanced Studies, a long name. And Guy hired me as an assistant university dean to take care of the research aspects of that. And that's sort of what developed. And then they hired, uh, uh, when Guy left, uh, he went to Wayne State, if I remember right. They hired, uh, well, we had hired a, a fellow by the name of Al Yates, who uh, is an associate university dean. And then when Guy left, Al was appointed university dean. Al went on to become uh, president of the University of Colorado, uh, State, Colorado State University, okay. and Al's done very, very well. Uh, he's retired now. So I just continued on, and then in 1990, Yola Bingham had taken Al's place when he left to go, he went to Washington State, if I remember right, and uh, when Yola retired, they appointed me as the interim vice president, knowing I was going to retire in a few years, that was 1990. So for three years I was the interim vice, well then they had changed the title to vice president for research and university dean for advanced studies. I don't know why they kept these long names in there, but they did. And I did that until I retired in 19, well, stepped down in 93 and then I retired in 94. Okay. So it, I guess one of the most interesting things that happened to me when I was in that position mm -hmm. was that even when I was an associate uh, vice president, the research institutes reported to me. Al set it up that way. And one of the institutes reported to me was the Institute of Engineering and Medicine. And uh, Neil Armstrong was a director of that. Oh, the and and uh, well, I team taught a course with Neil M. Armstrong, too, which was very interesting oh, wow. from the point of view of systems engineering. It was a, a professor of uh, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, and myself and Neil. Uh, the chemical person did the chemistry and yeah. all electrical did the elect I did the math part and Neil did the systems part and the funny part was that we sat in on each other's lectures you know, each of us when we were lecturing and when we lectured normal students were you know, doing other things or paying attention but it's not real but with Neil I don't think they breathe for 45 minutes for time it just <laughs> but the interesting thing he was he was a very good professor I, we had a meeting one time. They had a contract uh, with uh, Wright Pat. They were doing some kind of engineering and medicine study. Uh, I think it was an oxygen system or something in an aircraft. But in any case, in my office uh, for this meeting, I had uh, George Rivichel, who was a graduate of UC and invented the first uh, antihistamine, Benadryl. George done a lot for you. Henry he Heimlich, remember Heimlich remover? The, the Heimlich maneuver when you're choking on something, 
you get under the ribs, you put yeah. it on. He was he's famous. And then Neil Armstrong. Where I had three of the most famous people in my office at the same time. Uh, in the school? <laughs> in, 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 wow. in here at UC, yeah. And that was kind of an interesting meeting. Uh, but so there's a number of highlights that uh, that I had here. It, it, the other thing that uh, has changed, when I started in the research office in 73, or 72 or 73, uh, research was done, but it wasn't a higher priority. And now it's really grown. It is, yeah. And we, uh, one of the, the first intellectual property officer I hired back in about 82 or 83, if I remember right, and now that office has grown and there's a lot of trade-off between the ideas coming out from professors here at the universities in industry, so they're getting the information developed at the university, basic research over into industry a lot quicker now, which is so important, a technology transfer, if you would. So that's one of the things that I, I really enjoyed doing, and uh, the individual I hired, as I said, he was working half-time for us, and now they must have a staff of about 10 people in that office. It's amazing how it has grown. grown yeah. And the people here, it was very interesting working with the various uh, professors in, in the research office. I got to work with almost the entire university. Medical center is still pretty independent, but I did, during my last three years, I did work with the medical center a little more. But all the research that was done funneled, I mean, the funding of it had to be funneled through our office. So I got to interact with a lot of very good people, intelligent people, and I learned a lot. Uh, I've told my wife I learned something every day. It seems like I come home and learn something new. <laughs> a wonderful feeling. So, um, are you still involved with like what is going on now? And is there like any changes you've noticed? Oh, you know, like, changes are tremendous, yeah. <laughs> physical and the way they teach. I mean, uh, well, I remember when I came in as an undergraduate student, we had a, a dean. I think his name was Jurger. He's a, a German man. Very, yeah. very good man. But we were if not here. The from Wilson Auditorium was mm -hmm. on the corner of uh, right across from where DAAP is now, where they got the temporary building, more or yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had a convocation there, and uh, in his very Germanic way, he said, "Look to your right." And naturally, all eighteen-year-olds look to our right. Look to your left. Look to your left. And he said, "Only one of you will be here five years from now." In other words, the other. And that was true back then. About one third of the people entering engineering graduated. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a high washout rate. It, it just wasn't right. And now that's changed so much. I mean, the good students coming to engineering, we had good students coming back then. But for some reason, they felt that they had flunked a number of people. And uh, that has really changed. Now the graduation rate right, is 60, high, yeah. 70 percent, which is very good. Uh, and that, that's one big change, I think. The, the instruction, they give much more help to students Students, now. Yeah, yeah. Back then if a student was struggling, you were on your own. Now there are help ways, either yeah. student-oriented or faculty-oriented, that they can help students. Yeah. And that's so, so wonderful for especially first-year students where they have no background, their parents can't help them yeah. if they have no background. So that, that's a big change uh, that I see. And I think, well, the technology has changed Change so much. I mean, I had a slide rule. And that's the way we did problems. And then when my daughter was here, they had a calculator, and now everything's done on the computer. <laughs> I mean, the phone that I've got in my pocket, yeah. you probably have in your pocket, is probably as good as the when I was up at Wright Field, I was telling you about. That, that probably is more powerful than the 1620 IBM machine I was computer. using. It took up a whole room. <laughs> so technology is really. I, I work at Micro Center too, and like every time I come, like like the prices of like um, flash drives yeah. have like, on solo and like people used to come in as like the um, we have like 16 gig um, flash rifle like right. instead of us two dollars and like people come in and like you know back in the days these things were like it's so big and it caused a lot so I was like yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, it's, it's really changed, changed. I mean, it's funny story my daughter as I said uh, was in chemical engineering and when she she graduated I remember in 84 but they had calculators then TI calculators oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you look HP calculators but anyway her car, the battery went dead, and I had given her my old slide rule and taught her how to use it. So she pulled out the slide rule, and all the other kids were looking at her saying, what, is <laughs> what, is thing? what are you doing here? 
And the professor came down and said, I know where you got that fly rule from, from your father, did you? Because I knew him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, she goes to UC, right? She graduated yeah. from here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. She okay. worked at uh, Procter & Gamble. Well, she's since, I'm so old, she's retired already. But uh, I mean, that's a different issue. Okay. So, um, would you like to talk to us about administration, like some of the people like at this um, is there like some particular yeah. ones you like, some those yeah, you didn't the, like? The difference, like, uh, if I said, when I came here, uh, Walter Langson uh -huh. was the president. And, the owner uh, of like, the, the one that's built his name after, right? For, yeah, okay. exactly yeah, right. right. Yeah. Uh, he's a historian, very good historian, and he's very formal. I mean, a very good man, but very formal. And then after him, they hired Warren Bennis, and that was, he was just the opposite. Warren was just, he, he well, to show the difference, uh, Langsam had a driver in a mm -hmm. limousine that took him to work and everything. Warren came in, got rid of the limousine, and bought a Jeep. And he used to come to, to campus in an open-air Jeep all the time, you know. He was just very, very informal. Yeah, formal, yeah. So it, the difference in the styles of the different presidents that we had. And then Henry Winkler came in. I remember, right, Winkler was after Venice, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, Henry was a very good president. He was a historian, too. And then uh, see, after Winkler, I guess, it was uh, Joe Steger. Mm -hmm. And that's the Steger Center over by the, uh, the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. football Steger, stadium yeah. now. And there, they were all different types of people. It's interesting working with them. They're different styles. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that. The, the, like, the styles, like one being like formal, one being informal, like, did it? I think like relationship as a student, um, it, like did it have like any significance? Yeah, like, I think the way I think that uh, Walter Langsam, he he really didn't interact with students too okay, much. Okay. Whereas Warren Bennis did, and I think Henry Winkler did also in a different way, not as informally. As, but I think uh, the president, two presidents ago, the one that went to uh, Vancouver, forgot his name. He was he was the best. So I mean, I was retired by then, but he knew. He, I think he knew the students' names. Every student's name. He, he was. I can't think of his name. He he, he left here about uh, six or seven years ago, I guess. But anyway, yeah, the the, the way they interact with the students, uh, I think, is very important. It, it's different. It, it it's different styles in how the students react to that. And there's a lot of, uh, when Warren Bennis was here, uh, that's when we became from a city university to a so state, state university, university yeah, yeah. where there was a big change there. And uh, as I said, the other change was that research, it used to be that the budget of the university was funded maybe 95% by the state. By the state yeah. Now if it's 25%, it's a lot. I mean, we're, yeah. if a, someone in Ohio State told me one time, we're not state-supported universities anymore. We're state-assisted <laughs> universities. They give us a little money. So that's, that's oh, changed students. tremendously. Okay, yeah. And the outside funding uh, that the university gets is so much. Uh, I remember when we got our first million-dollar contract, research contract here, we thought it was great. Now they get $20, 30000000 million contracts. <laughs> not, not unusual at all, especially yeah. in the medical center from the NIH contract. And the other thing is the regulations have changed. Uh, we had to institute a human subjects policy that, uh, for like an interview like this, before you were allowed to do that, you, we had they had to go through a, a committee to make sure you weren't in, in any way endangering the student or taking away his or her rights or anything like that. And a human subjects committee now has to, or any federally supported research project, they have to go through the human that uses subjects in any way at all physically or psychologically, uh, they have to go through that committee. So the regulations have changed a lot. They've made it more difficult for the university and more expensive because yeah. they have to do these things or the, the federal government would cut off the funding that they give for research here, which is difficult. The, and the growth of the medical center, because mm -hmm. the medical center has grown tremendously uh, in the last 40 years or something yeah, like that. Big. And I think the, the diversity of the students here is another thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back then, there weren't a lot of students from overseas. And now, if you look at the population of the university, it, it's very, very right. significant. Yeah, and yeah. that's great, because you get a diversity of ideas. 
because that's one of the things that bothers me nowadays about university, the political correctness. To me, a university is a place where you, everybody expresses their ideas. We listen. Mm -hmm. Your idea may be different than mine, but I'll listen to your idea. Yeah, yeah. And I hope you listen to my idea, and then maybe we can reach some Understand compromise yeah. and say, okay, I agree with you on this, I disagree with that. Nowadays, it seems like if you're, you're, you're extremely liberal or extremely conservative, <laughs> and they don't listen to each other. And they, they sure, don't, the liberals true. don't want the conservatives talking, the conservatives don't want the liberals talking. How do you, how do you learn anything? <laughs> How do you progress that's if true. you don't have that? And that really bothers me. Uh, and that's one of the downsides, I think, that we have now. It's just that people, they talk a lot, but they don't listen that's to each other. Yeah, and that, that is something that somehow universities have to provide the lead, leadership in that. And I don't know about, I don't, I don't follow it that closely, but most universities are not doing a good job, I don't think, because they're, they're saying that conservatives forbid the liberals to speech, the liberals forbid, forbid the, the, the way. conservatives. Forbid How do you learn? How do That's you learn? true. How do you find out about different people? How do you find out about the world, what the world is really like? If we all live in our own little shell, we don't learn anything. And that, that bothers me. And I think it was better back when I, before I retired. Uh -huh. We were willing to trade ideas. And I, I may not agree with everything you said, but I was willing to listen to you and vice versa. And I think, I think that makes learning a lot better than it is now. Well, that's one of the disappointments I have of universities in general, not just UC. Yeah, UC. I don't, don't think UC is any better or worse than most of them. About the same. How you change that? I don't know. I wish I knew. But uh, the the growth of the university. I mean, when I was in Sorry. administration, my last year, the provost and and were all the administrators. Our goal was to keep the university below 36,000 students because we thought that was the most that it could handle with the facilities and the faculty yeah. we had at that time. And now it's just, what is it, about 45,000 now, something like that. And it's doing very well, which is, which is good. So it's grown, it's grown tremendously. I think it's got better, more diversified student population, more diversified in the uh, faculty population, yeah. which I think is a good thing. Okay. So um, you were here like when, like, I can say you experienced like the change in like diversity. Yeah. Like, was there any sort of like turmoil? Like, was there like any like how was it? How yeah. was it? Was it just they well, just from the faculty point of uh -huh. view? I don't think there was. was okay. No. Uh, I mean, it, there was change, but I think the, the the level of the quality of the faculty they were hiring uh -huh. was not diminished or anything like that. By matter of fact, it being improved a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so that was good. Uh, and the number of students, I think the way students were treated here were, was changed for the better. Okay. Um, I mean, like when I went to work uh, in Dallas, my first co-op job was in Dallas, Texas, and that was 1957, I guess. And I'm afraid to say, or I hate to say that back was a federally aircraft plant, federally owned aircraft okay. plant, and they still had colored restrooms and white restrooms and colored drinking fountain. And I couldn't believe it when I got down there. That's the way life was there. Nothing that, as a country, we should be proud of, but that's the way it was. And thank goodness that's all changed now. <laughs> for all, although there's still a lot of racism, racism in the world, which is too bad. But that's a different subject. I know. <laughs> Don't want to get into that. And so, um, Okay, were there like any specific incidents or like events that happened that like you can remember that was really maybe like about two or three like different? I have one that we studied in class that was that was like um, pretty much it's it looked like something that was really big during that time. That was like the 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 breakdown of the Sandler building. I don't like the explosion of this. I think like that was one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was one like main thing. We watched a video that it was those dust everywhere. Like, were you there? And like, what was you? I was on top of one of the other. Uh, oh, okay. And matter of fact, I took a picture of it. They put it in one of the civil engineering magazines. But no, uh, so that was very interesting to watch that. And very interesting from the point of view. You got a big building there, <clears throat> and it was more. The reason it was imploded was it was more costly 
to renovate the building than to blow it up and build a new building. And that's why the university went that way, because it had all this asbestos in it. It was so ex expensive to take it out and keep the people healthy while they were working. So that was a that was an interesting thing to, to watch. I was on the, the tower, I forget the, the, the dormitory on Cal on uh, Calhoun Street. Yeah. I was on the top of that okay. with some other people watching the implosion. So that was very interesting. And uh, what are the other things? Uh, I'm still, I just want to go a little bit still on the implosion. Like from an engineering point of view, like was there anything? Because I think like it, it takes a lot of like, I don't know, like calculations to be able to know how to place, yeah, yeah, place the yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, I was not involved oh, okay, with that okay, okay. at all. But, they did a good job okay. because they did come just down. Come, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they do that a lot now all over the world. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was interesting. I guess uh, they even get to sports <laughs> when that was in, well, that's when I was an undergraduate student. So in 1661, they NCAA, the basketball team won the national championship. That was when they had Oscar Robertson playing. Well, Oscar was here in 58 and 59. He came in the same year as an undergraduate. Then I came in. We both started. I didn't know him. He, he <laughs> got a lot more publicity. Uh, he, uh, he came in the same time in 1956 as I began as a, an undergraduate student. And the basketball teams were very good. They won the national championship for several years uh, after he graduated. So historically, I think that was significant. That, I think that gave the university, prior to that, just being a, a smaller, uh, I really don't remember what the enrollment was when I started, started here, but it was probably nine or 10,000 at the most. And uh, to win the National Basketball Championship, I think, brought some recognition to the university, university even though yeah. it should have nothing to do with academics. Yeah. The way the world is, it gets written up in the paper a lot. Yeah. So people yeah. remember, oh, University of Cincinnati, I remember that. That's the team that won the, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then when Neil Armstrong came here, came here in 1970, I remember right? Because at that time, um, Ron Houston was the director of the Institute of Space Sciences and I was the assistant or associate director. And President Langsam asked us to go to Washington to meet with Dr. Mr. Armstrong to kind of acquaint him with the university mm -hmm. and answer any questions he might have before we came. So I was able to do that. And that was kind of a historic event in my life anyway, okay. to meet the guy who'd just been on the moon. You yeah. know. <laughs> who later, as I said, came to university. Yeah. Uh, I guess those were the most historically type things that I was involved in. Okay. And I think, the, I think more recently, after I retired, uh, the uh, part of this project, the emeriti start getting more involved in the university because that's a lot of, uh, some of the professors retired have such a wealth of knowledge in their, his or her particular field. Mm -hmm. And just to let it sit there and not use it is That's, yeah, not very smart. Yeah. So now using that more and getting more in Maritai involved with that is, I think, a very good thing that the university is doing. Yeah. So that's probably how this project yeah, I can't started. <laughs> well, I remember I was on the uh, the board, the Maritai board, for uh -huh. a couple of years. Uh, and uh, when Gene Lewis, who was a former provost and professor of history, came up with this idea, and I think everybody said, hey, yeah, that really is a good idea. And now it's really helping, I think, the university. Yeah, you said Gene, right? What? You said Gene? Gene Lewis. Yeah, I think we, we met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gene's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, he was yeah, farming yeah. of the history. Matter of fact, I had him for history as an undergraduate student. <laughs> Gene's been here a long time. He was a very good professor. <laughs> had him for, as a matter of fact, I had him for uh, American history. In the book we used was uh -huh. the book written by Walter Langsell. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> That's great. Alright, so let's talk about things like, um, like things like how do the university respond to your needs? Do they still do that, like personal stuff? In case I don't know, I don't know what I want to talk figures, but like, how do the university respond to the needs of faculty and you, especially? Like, well, yeah, there's you... always some tension, especially since the the union, the AAUP, oh, okay. since that started in. It was under Warren Bennis, if I remember right, so it had to be in the uh, 70s sometime. There's always some tensions there, but 
in general, I think that uh, in our office, uh, Vice President for Research and University Dean, we worked with the faculty pretty closely, so we didn't have much of a tension, I think. And Al was a professor of chemistry and I was a professor of engineering. So we worked pretty well. Uh, sometimes the finance people and the uh, people like that, they, you know, responded pretty well. And I think there's a good working relationship between now between the faculty and the administration. Yeah. There's always going to be some tension. That's only yeah, yeah. natural in any organization. You have tension in between okay. the administrators and the people who actually do the work. Okay. The faculty do. They do the teaching. Yeah. And without the faculty, we wouldn't have a university. university and without the students, yeah. we wouldn't have a university. That's what you know. people say about the students. I say, hey, that's why the university is here, to educate yeah, the students. People. The faculty are the ones doing the education. But in general, I think they responded fairly well. Okay. okay. And um, what, we have this question that's, uh, what are you most proud of? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, what are you most proud of as being a teacher here and um, everything you've experienced, like, what are you most proud of? What you can say you are proud about or what, like, disappointed you works in a way? Like, is there, like, any major disappointments you had and, like, all any things that you are proud of? Like, any things? Probably, as I mentioned earlier, the growth in the research effort, effort. and okay. the involvement yeah. of the students, students in the research effort. I mean, now there's a lot of research projects that not only employ graduate students, but also undergraduate students. And that's a wonderful learning experience. I mean, it's one thing to, to listen to what's in a book and write formulas on the board or what have you, but to actually get involved with something, mm -hmm. with a research project, and find out, gee, I'll try this. doesn't always work the way you think it's going to work. Yeah. The book may say it's going to work that way, but no, it's not. for whatever reason, yeah. it doesn't work that way. So you, you learn. You learn so much by doing. I think that's a very, very important aspect of the, the growth in the learning process. And as I said early on, the co-op program is part of that, too, because going out in the industry and working, you can see, hey, some ideas you learn in the university sound great, but in industry they may not work as well. And that, I think, is so important. And that, that is something that I think I'm proud, proud of. of that yeah. the, and the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, too, is the intellectual property, the growth in that area. We're transmitting the technology transfer from the basic research ideas generated in the university to industry. And as I said, we hired, when I was in the office, the first technology transfer man who's a lawyer, chemical engineer by training. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he got his training at UC, yeah, yeah. and he went to Ohio State and got his master's degree and a legal degree there. But we hired him from industry. He was in, uh, at that time, he, was, well, he had retired from a conglomerate out of uh, Geneva, uh, Switzerland. Okay, uh, Geneva. And, and we, he came back to the States. He was looking for part-time work, and uh, someone let me know about him, so I contacted him, and we were able to hire him. And he started the program that is now, I think, a very significant effort that the university is, is using, or is, is having, which I think it's, so I'm kind of proud that we started it back in 1984 or whenever, but hiring one person to work half time, and now there's a staff of yeah, at least yeah. 10 people taking care of it. Disappointments? <laughs> no, I don't think I had any Disappointment, major, major disappointments. Okay. Uh, other than, if I mentioned earlier, the, the political correctness. It's okay, yeah, yeah. Part, but that was yeah. that didn't happen until after I left the university in 1994. Okay. Uh, gotten bad. Okay. And, uh, but teaching, if I said, the, the reason I really enjoyed teaching, when I did a lot of teaching, was a, the, the interaction with the students. Because I used to tell my wife, if I said earlier, you learn something every day from the students. <laughs> They'll come up with an idea. I hadn't thought of that, you know. And that's yeah. good. And that keeps you fresh, keeps you young. Uh, I'm 81 years old. I'm still climbing stairs with you. Uh, so <laughs> it does help to keep you, you know, yeah. you young, which is good. Okay. It's a good. It's a good profession. You have a chance. Go into it. <laughs> oh, okay, sir. So, and um, I think you mentioned earlier on, like. I wanted to ask, like, what has, like, the priorities of the universities, do you think it has changed in a way, but you, you mentioned earlier on about things like, um, 
Okay, has the priorities of the universities changed in, in a sense yeah, I, I think, for you? I think definitely, if I said more research oriented, yeah. which I think some people would say, well, research is taking a higher priority than teaching, and I, I don't believe that. I think the two, if they work together, research by the faculty of the university can really benefit the students in a number of ways. The one we talked about was the fact that students can participate in that research. Yeah. But the other way is keeping the faculty up to date too, because they're on the cutting edge of what's happening in their field, so they're going to become better teachers. So I think that's extremely important. Okay. I think that's one of the right. in, in, yeah, in priorities, okay. which is I think is good. And I think the other one is probably uh, giving more assistance to students, because to get into a university, you've got to have pretty much talent anyway, all right? Yeah. And before, when I started, there wasn't much help given to students. You were, you know, throwing in the pool, sink or swim, if you would. <laughs> and nowadays, there's more help. And that's so important, I yeah. think, to, because some, some people develop more slowly than other people, and they, they haven't developed work habits and study habits, and people can help them along. And that's so important that the university is doing that nowadays. I okay. think that's very good. And um, I could also say like the the land space of the university has increased over time. How what, how did it look like during like 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 basically you know when it was like a municipal like university like I knew there were like uh, buildings around like neighborhoods around like how it's changed tremendously. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where a lot of the buildings are was part of Burnett Woods at one uh -huh. time. The medical center has grown. The uh, Student Union has grown tremendously. C the College Conservative of Music, CCM, has grown tremendously. We've expanded the campus. Okay. And the buildings got, I mean, some of the buildings now are quite architecturally very yeah, yeah. well known, like, like some of the medical center yeah. and uh, some of the buildings. So I think the, the, the university has grown tremendously physically. And uh, I mean, you look at the uh, budget of the university, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm sure it's over a billion dollars a year, and uh, it's physically and monetarily, uh, it has grown tremendously. I mean, our, our endowment, last time I looked, was over a billion dollars. I mean, that payoff in comparison to Harvard, which is probably 34 billion or something like that. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's, it's significant. Uh, so, from that point of view, yeah, it's uh, the neighborhoods around the university. Uh, are gone now. <laughs> there were little pockets of neighborhoods uh, down where a lot of the uh, the athletic facilities mm -hmm. are. There's, there's, you know, the tennis courts and the, okay, the okay. soccer field yeah. and the new basketball arena. That was all little neighborhoods there. Where people were living there, and intramural games where the, the the students participated. And that's where we had intramurals, football and baseball and things like that. There were fields down in there, so it's it's changed. And if I said Burnett Woods. There's a drive through Burnett Woods that came up, and uh, I guess the edge of the chemistry building, that was the edge of the campus, right? There were university drives come mm -hmm. in, but it's not even a street there anymore. So physically, it's changed significantly. And like now, among students, one of the problems is like parking. <laughs> Has it ever been a problem? Was it ever a problem? Or like it was always parking same. at a university. When I was at Michigan, uh -huh. the same way. Parking horrendous and any university you want to go to. We are not unique there, take my word for it. But you had no garages back then. You uh, parked yeah, on the street, the street all yeah. neighborhoods. Because the neighbors didn't like that all the students parking <laughs> in the neighborhood, but that happened. Uh, so the, yeah, that parking, that's one thing about being in America. When I retired, I have lifetime free parking. Free parking. <laughs> <laughs> the best retirement benefit I got. <laughs> but parking's always been a problem. And it still is. If, any university, I have a grandson that goes to University of California, Berkeley, and that's a mess out there. I had a granddaughter that went to Northwestern. Parking's terrible there, too, so it's, it's uniform. Okay, so since, the, since it became like a state university, how has UC been interacting with the university, with the community? Has it done a good job of like being able to be the university for the city? Like, has I, I think, in a way, yes. Uh, I think there's a lot of programs at the university, and have been for years and years, and still are, uh, that interact with the community. community. Uh, whether it be urban 
uh, analysis or urban design or political science or what have you. Uh, I like the way the university is helping out with education now at high school and, and elementary for STEM, science, technology, engineering, yes. and, and mathematics, uh, participating with the old uh, youth high school there and a number of other units. Yes. And I like the way the university is outreaching now to uh, with elderly people. CCM does a lot in retirement centers now. They go out to, well, like Maple Knoll is one, mm -hmm. and they have programs out there, not only educational programs, but CCM students come out and perform out there. Yeah. So uh, it, that, I think, it's is very well. good. And okay. I think that's, that's good that universities should continue to do that because yeah. we're called the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati yeah. and we should interact with <laughs> the community. Uh, and there's always more to be done. now. Sometimes in the university we're building a building, displacing some people People's. living there. That didn't work out. That, that's part of development. And I think who is it? The FC Cincinnati is going through that now. The soccer stadium is one of those things. People get displaced, they get upset, and I don't blame them. But development has to take place, yeah. take place yeah. anyway. And how do you do it without hurting some people? Who was it? Uh, Abraham Lincoln said you can please all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time. You can't please all the people all the time. And that's a truism. That is a truism. So that's been a big change. Okay, I um, want to talk about things like... How do you see or like what you hope for the university like in your mind like what you want to see the university do well like the future of the university like uh, how how it has increased with let's say research has become better as she said um what do you want to see in that line of research like what it can be better and also like generally in the university what you want to see you see become i think one of the most important thing is like what we talked about a little bit earlier political correctness, yeah, okay. make the university that, yeah. what it's supposed, supposed to be. To be okay. That is an interchange of ideas where people listen to everybody, right. to each other, mm -hmm. and they gain knowledge from that. Because, if I always tell people, you never learn anything by talking. You learn by listening. listening. And people don't listen okay. very well. Uh, so that's extremely important. And I think we can never forget the purpose of the university is to educate students. Research is important, but the students have to be number one. So that means the research has to be tied to the education of the students. And that's extremely important. And some people forget that, both faculty and students. So I think I would like to make sure that that's always a priority of the university. Research is important, but still, the, students, yeah. the students are why we're here. And the research has to be tied to okay. students. And the other thing is um, to get the research done here with faculty and students out so that it can benefit society. And that's where technology transfer comes in, which I was talking about earlier. And I think the university is, is doing that much better. They have these innovation centers now, the old, old, the old Sears Center, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. things like that. That's extremely important. Uh, it, you know, I was in science and engineering primarily, but I think what the university does in the arts, the CCM is an extremely poly, good college. They've turned out some excellent artists, uh, producers, uh, music directors, things of this nature. And DAAP, their, their program that they have over there in design is one of the best in the country. I mean, urban design and uh, interior design. And the architectural school is a very good. The medical school is excellent, and they serve the community, and that's growing and continues to grow. Not only in the research, but their patient care. It's uh, so I, that's what I would like to see university do: to yeah, okay. get more active with students and research. Continue that, I should say. Get more active. Continue their activity with the community, which includes the medical center, CCM, CCM. Uh, the performing arts, the visual arts through DAAP and in the humanities too. I mean, you, to be a fully educated person, you have to know something. Right? And that's one of the things that bothers me, not about the university, but about the world. We tend to forget about history. And uh, not everything that any country in the world has done is good. But you can't wipe out 
what the history is. The history is there. You've got to learn from the history and do better. And sometimes we don't want to do that. Uh, we, we, we ignore history. You know, or we try to put it down and say, well, you know, that's not part of us. Well, it is part it of is. us. It is part of us. And you've got to learn from that. That's part of being educated. Well, hopefully that answered your question. I, I, I rambled <laughs> yeah. a little bit. <laughs> you answered my question. And also, um, okay, so is there anything like you want to say, like anything that the like want to say Just that to I help, to, let's say to help like people who want to know about a university later on in the future, like is there anything personally you want to talk and say or? No, I just uh, keep an, an open mind. Open don't, mind. Don't think you know everything because you don't know everything. As a matter of fact, I always tell people that, you know, if I, I don't know if I should use the language, but the more you're educated, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. When you're 18, I don't know how old you are, I don't want to insult you. When you're 18 years old, you think you know everything. Yeah, you know. And nothing you don't know, all right? If you get older, you find out, gee, I didn't know that. And I'm 81 now, and I'm finding out I still don't know Seriously. too much. I'm learning every day. So the thing that you have to impress upon, the faculty needs to impress upon students, is that you never stop learning. Once you stop learning, that's terrible. You've got, in, in, no matter what you do in life, you're learning, whether you're learning more interpersonal communications, whether you're learning things about technology, whether you're learning about history, learning about music, arts, what have you, never stop learning. And the faculty should impress that. And I think they do to the students nowadays. So that, to me, that, that's important. And if a party shot, I would say I've really, I've been fortunate I really enjoyed my career at the university. As a student, I got a good education here. I worked at, uh, when I co opt I worked with students from Georgia Tech, from MIT, from University of Texas, well, all Northwestern, I forget, they had co op students at the Chanfot Aircraft where I worked. And our students could hold with, and back then, and they still can. I mean, our the students that graduate from here, you may not hear as much about Cincinnati, Harvard, or Yale, or Cal Berkeley, where I have a grandson going there. I tried to get him to UC, but he went to Cal Berkeley. But anyway, if you apply yourself, you can get a wonderful education here. here. They have a very productive and happy life. And uh, I was very fortunate to work here for so many years. I worked with some wonderful people all the way from the janitors or all the way up to the president of the university and from one of my best friends who worked at Cisco plant here and I still see them, as a matter of fact, which is wonderful. Uh, it's been a wonderful career for me. My family, I had four children that graduated from here, only one in engineering, only <laughs> three on the way for business. But, uh, they got a good education. As a matter of fact, I have two, one granddaughter that just graduated and a granddaughter and a grandson that are here right now. Mm -hmm. And they're in business too. I don't know why the whole family's do <laughs> business, but they do. <laughs> so it, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. And I've also enjoyed the interview with you. It's been so enlightening. <laughs> yeah. And um, I want to know like, if there's any person, like anyone, like you would recommend for an interview and why would you want it? Like, is there anyone that, I some of that knowledge, some of the someone people, would know? Uh, that you think might be interesting to know. Ali Yates would be, if you could get him back here, he's oh, not he's here, not he's, here. Okay. he's in Colorado, <laughs> he, lives in, I think he lives in Boulder, Colorado now. He'd be interested, because he started a lot of things here that really were good, I think. Uh, other person would be uh, with Norm Baker. I think he's on your list already. Norm Baker. Norm Baker. He was a provost, he's a professor oh, in quantitative analysis in uh, business school, and he was okay. provost here too for a number of years. Maybe and he'd be a very good person to interview. Uh, oh, who else? Yeah, there's so many people. I, I saw a list uh, when we first put it together, the, uh, uh, the council of the Maritime Board. And uh, I forgot who else. Gene Lewis, if you had an interview with Gene, yeah. be very, he knows a lot about the university. Uh, I'm afraid to say some of the other people, people. I would recommend are no longer with us there. 
somewhere. So. They passed away. <laughs> you must realize I'm 81. A lot of my colleagues are no longer in the world today. <laughs> sad to say. That's sad. But I would recommend. So I, I think that people Gene might recommend uh, would be would be great. Very good. great. Yeah. Yeah. The other person I'm working with is David Lee Smith. Do you happen to know him? Oh, sure. Yeah. David was on the council with me. He was over in uh, DAAP, if I remember right. Okay. He was he in design or architecture. Anyway, yeah. David's a, a good a person. A good person, too. Yeah. yeah, he was on the board. Uh, who else was there? I think there are people in different fields. Um, that's one thing you get old, you forget things too easily. <laughs> They come back to you, but it takes a while. The neurons aren't firing as well. You know, things are hidden in your, make it like a computer, in different file folders, and you can't access them as quickly as you used to be. It comes to you in the middle of the night, and I'll wake up my wife and say, I remember that. <laughs> Other than that. So I'm sure you get a lot of ideas yeah, from yeah, other people. Yeah. They're good projects. I hope, hope eventually something comes out. I hope we'll, I'll be able to see something. Yeah, yeah, we, we have planned plan to put it together. Yeah, we, we plan to put it together and like you, we, I think we send you the footage, like you're able to see, are we able to, are they able to like other people's footage or something? Or is it just yes. yours? I think it's just <laughs> one. Okay, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. we're trying to put them all together and like, I'd be used to help. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. look at it, yeah, I, to I, help. I'll to learn help. from it too. From yeah. Things that I don't know about. <laughs> things you remember. These people might say, well, yeah. oh yeah, I remember that now, but I don't remember what I was talking to you. So, yeah. it's it's a nice project. Uh, yeah. Thank you. How long is it, when do you hope to complete it all? Is there a um, deadline? We're supposed to interview like three people, so. How many? Three. 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 three people, yeah. How many people are doing it? I Good. Think, Five, five, five people. So be yeah. Fifteen people. Yeah, so fifteen together. people. Yeah, all okay. together. And we are supposed to do all that and finish all that by August. Yeah, by August. Yeah, we have like three weeks to be able to do. So okay. next week I'm doing someone else. The other week I'm doing someone else. So we're trying to get ideas and like for people to have like information start up. So that's basically it. Yeah. Well, I wish you well. <laughs> Thank you, you did sir. a good job. I enjoyed Thank talking you. to you. Thank you, sir. You were quite quiet. I didn't yeah, it was. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I want to thank you for well, coming. Thank for, you. For Appreciate like, it. it thank so, you, young man. Was so and good luck in your. What are you studying, by the way? Uh, I'm in urban planning. Hey, what? Urban, urban planning. planning. Urban yeah. planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tom Wagner was over there. But that's another name you might talk to. Tom, Tom Wagner. Tom Wagner. He was a uh, professor in urban planning, if okay. I remember right. And uh, he's retired now, of course. And uh, he was also in a provost office. He was dean of men for a while. When we had a dean of men, I don't think they have that title anymore. He was dean of men for a while, and then he went and he was an associate provost or something. So Tom would be. And another, I just thought of another. <laughs> uh, Maria Kreppel. Maria Kreppel. She was in... Uh, Ohio College of Applied Science. I think she was in English. But she was in the provost office. <laughs> she was interesting because uh, when Norm Baker was provost, uh, she was in charge of the interaction with the faculty. We call it faculty affairs. <laughs> I always teased her. Whoa, you're in charge of faculty affairs, all right. But anyway, she, I don't know what she can describe to you, but she had a lot of interesting cases that she had to work on that involved. Is it, is it, does it have to do with law, is it anything? Oh yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Law for broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, not routinely, but she That's got true. involved with all of that. I was not involved much of that. But there, there might, she might not be a, a, a good person to interview because she wouldn't be able to tell you a lot of the stuff. Yeah. But Tom That's Wagner true. would be, Tom okay. Wagner would be excellent. And he has a long, I think he was an undergraduate student here too. Mm -hmm. got a, he, Got his doctorate from education, if I remember right. So, uh, Tom would be good. So, I wish you well. All right. Thank you, Thank sir. You. <laughs> nice meeting you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you for much. setting it up right. and giving me my morning good. exercise by running up the steps first. with you. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to take the elevator. I would have yeah, liked to do that, that, but I wasn't <laughs> going to give in to him. I'm walking the steps with you. Now I got to go home and take a nap for it. <laughs> <laughs>